first thing that I heard, Mr. President, uh, was that this bill was just too expensive. It's $1.9 trillion. That's a lot of money, no doubt. But this country has never, ever faced a healthcare crisis or an economic crisis like we do today. This is an unprecedented moment in our nation's history, and it requires us to step up and do something um, that isn't just going to sound like it will work and help people, but actually will. And, and what's, I guess to me, ironic about this claim that it's too expensive, that it's going to cost our kids and grandkids too much money, is that Republicans passed a tax bill that was almost to the dollar the exact same amount as this relief bill is. They passed a $1.9 trillion tax bill where the majority of the benefits went to the richest Americans who needed no more help. And so it's a little hard to listen to my Republican colleagues claim that this bill is too expensive when they were willing to spend the exact same amount of money in 2017 on tax cuts for their wealthy corporate and millionaire friends. It is also hard to listen to this argument because just a year ago, Republicans were willing to spend $1.9 trillion to address this crisis. It isn't as if Republicans haven't understood when they were in control of the White House and the Congress that we needed to step up and meet this moment. Republicans have said, well, this is different because we're turning the corner. Well, as Senator Durbin laid out very well, we may be able to see the corner, but we're not there yet. March 24th was the day that we passed the CARES Act, almost the same amount of money as we're considering today. On that day, 737 people died of COVID-19. Yesterday, 2,369 people died of COVID-19. So in many ways, the crisis today is exponentially worse than it was a year ago when Republicans to a person were willing to spend $2 trillion on the crisis. And by the way, the economic crisis is still acute. There may be technically more people at work today than there was in April or May of last year, but surveys suggest today 80% of Americans don't have enough money to pay their bills. Why? Because a lot of people are back to work, but they're working fewer hours, right? They have less reliable work. Here's the second um, critique that is made over and over about this bill. It's a partisan bill, Republicans say. Well, that is a complaint of Republicans' own making because it is only a partisan bill in the United States Senate. Three out of four voters support the American Rescue Plan. This is a recent morning consult poll. It's been referred to before on the floor. 70% of all voters support the American Rescue Plan. Not surprisingly, there's some difference between Democrats and Republicans, but frankly, not much. 90% of Democrats support the American Rescue Plan, 60% of Republicans support the American Rescue Plan. Why? Because everybody is hurting in this country. Everybody is hurting. This is a unifying proposal in the American public. And finally, Mr. President, this was maybe the most interesting theme of the complaints. It's not COVID relief. I I I've heard different statistics thrown out by my Republican friends some of them suggest only 5% of this bill is COVID relief. And I'm not sure exactly how they come to that calculation, but what I understand them to say is that anything that isn't directly related to putting shots in people's arms or treating people with present cases of COVID is not COVID relief. Well, let's just take a look at what was broadly part of the CARES Act that was supported by every single Republican and what is broadly part of the American Rescue Plan. Because my Republican colleagues thought that everything in the CARES Act was COVID relief, whether it was designed to immediately attack the healthcare crisis 
or whether it was designed to address the economic crisis. There were stimulus checks in the CARES Act, not as big as the ones in the American Rescue Plan, but they were COVID relief when we passed the CARES Act. Now, according to Republicans, they're not COVID relief. There was an unemployment extension and a plus up in the maximum benefit under the CARES Act. That was COVID relief back in March of last year, but now, according to Republicans, it's not COVID relief. There was money for vaccines and for testing in the CARES Act. In the American Rescue Plan, money for vaccines, testing. Small business relief was, of course, conceived in the CARES Act, the PPP program. That's a big part of the American Rescue Plan, but now it's not COVID relief, according to my Republican colleagues, whereas it was last year. There was state and local funding in the CARES Act. There's state and local funding in the American Rescue Plan. There was rent and mortgage relief in the CARES Act. There's rent and mortgage relief in the American Rescue Plan. All of a sudden, since Democrats took control of the White House and took control of the Senate, all of these things, which were categorized as COVID relief by Republicans in March, are no longer COVID relief. And so this idea that this is some Democratic wish list when we are essentially just extending or increasing the same funding streams that were in the CARES Act is nonsense. It's nonsense. Of course this is all COVID relief. Of course it is COVID relief when you are increasing nutritional benefits to people who can't afford to feed their kids because they've lost their job or they've lost hours because the economy melted down due to a pandemic. This bill is expensive, but it is not too expensive. This moment is unique, and we are mandated by our oath of office to meet this moment.